Once upon a time, a man named Elijah was feeling very scared and alone. Elijah, a faithful servant of God, found himself in the wilderness, fleeing from those who threatened his life. His heart was heavy, his spirit was low, and he felt like he was the only one left who still believed in God. In his loneliness and despair, Elijah sought refuge under a broom tree. He prayed to God, expressing his deepest fears, his darkest thoughts. It was in this moment of vulnerability that something extraordinary happened. You see, God didn't leave Elijah to face his fears alone. No, he showed up for Elijah, but not in the way you might think. We often imagine God's voice to be loud, booming, and grand, echoing from the heavens. But that's not how God chose to speak to Elijah. There was a great wind, strong enough to shatter mountains and break rocks, but God was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but God was not in the fire. And then, after all that noise and chaos, came a still small voice, a gentle whisper that cut through the silence. It was in this quiet, humble whisper that Elijah found God. It was in this whisper that God comforted Elijah, reassured him, and let him know that he was not alone. This story teaches us a profound lesson. God is always with us, even when we feel alone. He's there in our darkest nights and our deepest fears. He's there in the quiet moments and the gentle whispers. And sometimes that's where we find him the most, in the still small voice that speaks to our hearts when we least expect it. So remember, even in our scariest moments, God is there, whispering words of comfort and love. Now, let's journey with Elijah once again, but this time to a place far, far beyond the clouds. In the ancient times, there lived a prophet named Elijah. He was a man of faith, courage, and conviction. One day, something extraordinary happened. Elijah was about to embark on his most mystical journey yet. Not by boat, not by foot, but in a chariot of fire, drawn by horses of fire. Now imagine that. Elijah was swept up in this divine blaze, a chariot not of this world, but of a heavenly realm. It was a sight to behold, a spectacle full of awe and wonder. And who was there to witness this grand event? Elijah's faithful protege, Elisha. Elisha saw his master taken up into the heavens, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen! Such a sight was more than just a celestial spectacle. It was a testament to the power of God, a proof of His divine majesty, and a demonstration of His mysterious ways. What can we learn from Elijah's heavenly journey? It's that the ways of God are full of wonder and mystery. His plans are not always what we expect. Sometimes they are beyond our comprehension, beyond our wildest dreams, but they are always, always perfect. Elijah's journey tells us that God can take us places we've never imagined. He can lift us up, not just metaphorically, but literally beyond the clouds, beyond the stars, into his heavenly realm. All he asks for is faith, courage, and conviction, just like Elijah. Elijah's story is a reminder that our journey on earth is temporary and our true home lies beyond. It teaches us to trust in God's plans, to embrace His divine mysteries, and to always keep our faith strong and unwavering. So the next time you look up at the sky, remember Elijah's fiery chariot. Remember the wonder, the mystery, and the divine power of God. And remember, just as He had a plan for Elijah, He has a plan for each one of us. Isn't that amazing? God's plans are always surprising and more wonderful than we could ever imagine. Imagine a time when the people of Judah had to leave their homes and travel to a faraway land called Babylon. Let's take a journey back to a period in history that was incredibly challenging for the people of Judah. The kingdom of Judah, once prosperous and free, found itself under the rule of the mighty Babylonian Empire. The people were forced to pack up their belongings, say goodbye to their homes, and embark on a long, arduous journey to an unfamiliar land. This was the time of the exile to Babylon. Life, as the people of Judah knew it, was upended. They had to leave behind their beloved homes, their cherished temples, and their way of life. They were thrust into a foreign world, far from everything they knew and loved. 
The vibrant streets of Judah were replaced with the strange sights, sounds, and smells of Babylon. The laughter and joy that once filled their homes were now replaced with longing and sorrow. But why did this happen, you may ask? The people of Judah had strayed from their faith, they had forgotten the teachings of their forefathers, and had started to follow a path that was not in accordance with their beliefs. This led to their downfall and exile. Yet in the midst of the sadness and hardship, there was a glimmer of hope. Yes, they were in a foreign land, far from home, but they remained together as a community. They were able to lean on each other for support, comfort, and strength. They found solace in their shared experiences and began to understand the true meaning of unity and perseverance. The exile was a challenging time indeed, but it was also a time of learning and growth. The people of Judah learned the importance of staying true to their beliefs and values. They realized the significance of unity, resilience, and faith in the face of adversity. They understood that even in the darkest of times, there is always a spark of hope, a beacon of light guiding us towards better days. The story of the exile to Babylon is not just a tale of loss and despair, it is also a story of resilience and faith. It is a testament to the human spirit and its ability to endure, to learn, and to grow even in the toughest of times. The people of Judah may have lost their homes, but they never lost their faith or their hope. In our own lives, we too may face challenges and hardships. There may be times when we feel lost, confused, or overwhelmed. There may be moments when we find ourselves in a proverbial Babylon, far from everything we know and love. But the story of the exile to Babylon teaches us that we can face these challenges with courage and faith. We can learn from our experiences and grow stronger, just like the people of Judah did. Even in tough times, remember, there's always a lesson to be learned and growth to be experienced. No matter what we're going through, there's always an opportunity for growth and learning. So when faced with a challenge, let's remember the people of Judah and their journey to Babylon. Let's remember their resilience, their faith, and their ability to find hope even in the most difficult times. And let's use their example to inspire us to face our own challenges with courage, faith, and hope. Now imagine the joy and relief when the people of Judah were finally allowed to return home. The people of Judah had experienced years of hardship in Babylon, but their story didn't end there. As the sun set on their time in exile, a new day was dawning, a day filled with hope, promise, and a journey home. The Persian King Cyrus had issued a decree. He had been moved by something greater, something divine, to allow the people of Judah to return to their homeland. It was almost as if the winds of change had whispered in his ear, guiding his actions. And so it was time for the people of Judah to pack up their belongings, their memories of Babylon, and set forth on their journey back home. As they prepared to leave, there was an air of excitement, a buzz of anticipation. Their hearts were filled with joy and gratitude, their spirits were high, and their hopes were even higher. As the people made their way back home, they didn't just journey through the physical landscape, they journeyed through a landscape of emotions, too. There were moments of joy and moments of sorrow, moments of looking back and moments of looking forward. But through it all, their spirits remained high, their faith remained unshaken. When they finally reached their homeland, it was a sight to behold. The land they had once known was now in ruins, but even in its state of disrepair, it was beautiful to them. It was home. The people of Judah got to work, rebuilding their homes, their temples, their lives. They worked tirelessly, driven by the promise of a fresh start, a new beginning. As they rebuilt, they sang songs of praise, their voices echoing through the valleys and the hills, a testament to their unyielding faith and resilience. This return from exile wasn't just about a physical journey. It was a spiritual journey too. It was a testament to the power of hope, the power of faith, and the power of divine mercy. The people of Judah had experienced years of hardship, but they never gave up. They held on to their faith. They held on to their hope. And in the end, they were rewarded with a new beginning. This story is a reminder to us all 
A reminder that no matter how hard things get, no matter how long the night, there's always hope for a new beginning. There's always the promise of dawn after the darkness. It's a reminder that God is merciful, that He sees our struggles, hears our prayers, and in His time, He makes all things new. So, as we journey through life, let's remember the people of Judah. Let's remember their journey from exile to home. Let's remember their faith, their resilience, their hope. And let's remember that no matter what we're going through, no matter how long our night, there's always the promise of a new day, a new beginning. No matter how long the night, the dawn will break, so always hold on to hope. Have you ever dreamed of something so amazing that it left you wide-eyed in awe? That's what happened to a man named Isaiah. One day, Isaiah found himself standing in a place like no other. It was a grand and magnificent place, so beautiful and awe-inspiring that it's almost impossible to describe. This place was not on earth, but in the heavenly realm where God resides. Imagine the grandest and most stunning palace you've ever seen. Multiply it by a hundred, and you're still not even close to the majesty of where Isaiah found himself. This was the throne room of God. In this room, Isaiah saw God sitting on a high and lofty throne. The hem of God's robe filled the entire room, signifying his power and authority over all things. Above God's throne, Isaiah saw seraphim, angelic beings with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with the remaining two, they flew. These seraphim were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The sound of their voices was so powerful that it caused the doorposts and thresholds to shake. Imagine how Isaiah must have felt witnessing such a display of divine majesty and power. He was in the presence of the Almighty God, witnessing His holiness firsthand. Overwhelmed by the grandeur of God's holiness, Isaiah realized his own unworthiness. He cried out, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. But God, in his mercy, sent one of the seraphim with a burning coal taken from the altar. The seraph touched Isaiah's lips with the coal, symbolizing the purification of his sins. Then he heard the voice of God asking, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? With a cleansed heart and a newfound courage, Isaiah responded, Here am I, send me. And just like that, Isaiah was commissioned by God to go and deliver his messages to the people. This vision that Isaiah had, is a reminder for all of us. It tells us that God is huge and holy. He is greater and more wonderful than anything we can ever comprehend. His majesty is beyond our understanding, and His holiness is perfect. God's greatness can sometimes make us feel small and insignificant, but remember, it's the same God who loves us and has a special plan for each of us. Just as He had a mission for Isaiah, He has a mission for you, too. So let's remember, kids, God is bigger and more amazing than we can ever imagine. Wow! What an adventure we've had, journeying through these incredible stories. We've traveled through time, seen miracles, experienced sorrow and joy, and learned a lot along the way. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. In our first stop, we met a man named Elijah, who taught us about the still small voice. Remember how he found God not in the wind? nor the earthquake, nor the fire, but in a still small whisper. That's a reminder to us all to slow down, to listen, and to find God in the quiet moments of our lives. Then we followed Elijah on his heavenly journey. This story showed us that even when things seem impossible, with faith, all things can become possible. Elijah didn't need a spaceship to reach the heavens, did he? No, he simply trusted in God and was taken up in a chariot of fire, what a sight that must have been! Our third story took us to a darker time, the exile to Babylon. Even in the midst of great hardship and struggle, the people of Judah remained faithful. They showed us that sometimes we have to go through tough times, but those tough times don't define us. Our faith and our strength do. Then oh what joy there was when we got to the return from exile. The people of Judah were allowed to go back home to rebuild, to start again. It was a new beginning, a fresh start. It taught us that no matter how hard things get, 
there's always a chance for a new beginning. Our last stop was with Isaiah and his vision of God. This story reminded us of the majesty and glory of God. Isaiah saw God seated on a throne high and exalted and his heart was filled with wonder and awe. It's a reminder to us all of the greatness of God and his love for us. So what's the takeaway from all these stories? Well, they remind us to listen for God's voice in the quiet moments, to have faith even when things seem impossible, to stay strong during tough times, to embrace new beginnings, and to remember the greatness of God. These stories aren't just tales from long ago. They're lessons for us to carry in our daily lives. They're reminders of faith, of hope, of strength, and of love. And the most beautiful part? These stories are still being told, still being lived, by each and every one of us every single day. So as we end our journey today, let's carry these stories and their lessons in our hearts. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep growing in faith. Goodbye.